This program is sponsored in part by the National Catholic Society of Foresters. Hello again and welcome to Looking at Social Justice. We have had some very interesting guests already. We've had someone from Atlanta, but today we struck it rich. We have a guest all the way from Washington, D.C., from the capital, by way of, believe it or not, Nicaragua. So it gets, it gets very interesting. Why is this interesting? It's because this program means to be talking about social justice, not just what happens in the Diocese of Fresno, but rather what happens in the Catholic world, what happens in the entire world. And at the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, there are certain departments, and we'll be visiting two programs in a row with guests who are visiting the diocese to give us a little insight into what they do at the Capitol and how their work touches the whole country. My guest today happens to be David Corrales. He is representing the Office of Pastoral Care of Migrants, Refugees, and Travelers out of a leadership office department called the Secretariat of Cultural Diversity in the Church. So obviously the topic that David is going to be unraveling with us is what he does in Washington to help the rest of the church understand the need to be sensitive to cultural diversity not only nationally where he works but where he travels which is the world. So David it is a privilege to have you here visiting us in the Diocese of Fresno. Tell us just a little bit about yourself even before you started this work for the mm -hmm. conference. So um, I was born in Brazil but I left when I was two and um, really grew up in Nicaragua and um, uh, you know grew up in a Catholic family uh, went to a Jesuit school and uh, actually went to uh, uh, an American college called Ave Maria University and I did there my freshman and sophomore year and then after that I came to the United States when I was 20 um, came to the United States to study basically I, I had not uh, anticipated that I was gonna stay here uh, forever and um, but uh, I did my undergrad in uh, general business at Marymount University, and then I did my uh, master's in integral economic development management in uh, Catholic University. And um, while I was doing my, my wow. master's, uh, which was uh, just a couple blocks away from uh, the Conference of Catholic Bishops, um, we had the director of the subcommittee for the church in Latin America, which is a subcommittee that basically gives donations to the church in Latin America. And um, he, you know, a great guy, wow. Father uh, Juan Molina, uh, who has his PhD in economics also. Um, so he came to our, our program and he gave a, a seminar on the work of the church and the donations that they gave in Latin America. And um, at the end of his uh, talk, he, he said that there was an internship uh, position opportunity. Gee. So that's how I got connected. I started as an intern. How long so ago was that? I in internships. <laughs> uh, that was about six years ago, yeah. Now tell us, this is getting more interesting by the moment. So you, um, you went to Loyola Marymount, so you have more of this Jesuit formation, then you went to the Catholic U in, in Washington. Now that you're in Washington, introduce us broad strokes to the USCCB, mm -hmm. to the United States Conference of the Catholic Bishops. Mm -hmm. What is that large, large project mm -hmm. at the Capitol? Just to clarify, there's another Marymount in Arlington, Virginia. Oh because you and, didn't um, say Loyola yeah, Marymount, you no. said Marymount. So, uh, just want to clarify that. Yeah, but, you did. <laughs> um, but that, that was a great opportunity. It's an awesome Marymount, and I definitely <laughs> recommend it too. But um, yeah, now working, uh, I, I started working uh, for the conference uh, as an intern, and then as a grants administrator uh, with the subcommittee for the Church in Latin America. So that, that was really my, my first experience with working with the bishops and uh, at the conference. Uh, receiving grant proposals from the church in Latin America, uh, uh, you know, in Spanish, Portuguese, English, and just helping to uh, process those grant proposals. Later on, uh, I started uh, working with the subcommittee that you mentioned the, on pastoral care of migrants, refugees, and travelers as a program coordinator. And then uh, that's really opened doors to, to really get to know so many different communities. Uh, but the reason why we're here is 
to focus on migrant ministry. Um, basically, one of the different communities that we seek to support uh, is migrant farm workers. Um, the subcommittee is one of many subcommittees under the Committee on Culture Diversity. There's a subcommittee on Hispanic Affairs, African American Affairs, Native American Affairs, Asian and Pacific Islanders, and then we're, it's, it's us. But it's basically the rest of the world. But one of the interesting things that we do at the subcommittee is uh, we focus on what we call uh, the Ministry to, uh, of Human Mobility. So the, the idea is that there are communities out there that are always on the move. And because of that, it's hard for uh, parishes with their regular ministries to cater to them. Um, you know, this can be, as I said, seasonal you know, workers, migrant farm workers, but they're also, uh, we were actually talking about this, but traveling shows, like the people from the circus, the carnivals, the racetracks, uh, the seafarers. There's so many different communities yeah. out there, um, and many Catholic also, uh, that also need you know, to have the church close to them. Um, so that's kind of what we try to do, to raise awareness about their pastoral needs and coordinate initiatives, either at the national or local level, that can somehow strengthen or mo motivate the local church to reach out to them. Now, right now, you happen to be in the middle of a pastoral visit to the Diocese of Fresno. Now, that makes sense to us who live here in the Central Valley because we have such a very important, a very, very urgent, and a very, very um, esteemed tradition of migrant ministry. But we're not unique in the country. Do you want to tell us other dioceses that also might make us be aware that, you know, not every migrant lives in Fresno Diocese. <laughs> Tell us about some of their major cities and rural areas that you also minister yeah. to, David. Well, uh, really the people that minister to them are, is the local people, is the, is the priests, the local church, the, the nuns. What we try to do is, again, to organize initiatives that can strengthen that ministry. Um, but I've been working with the subcommittee for about five to four, four years. And then uh, it, this is an annual pastoral visit. And we generally do it with, with a, a bishop member of our subcommittee. Um, and then so the other dioceses that I've visited uh, have been Jackson, Mississippi, uh, the Diocese of Lexington, the Archdiocese of Louisville, um, the Diocese of Boise, Idaho, and then this diocese. But the Fresno is definitely <laughs> well known for having a very large oh, yeah migrant population. I'm really glad I did ask that question. I want to give myself a congratulations because it brings <laughs> up the idea that in places like Boise and Louisville and Lexington and Jackson, Mississippi, <laughs> where one might not think yeah. that the church is present, like you said, with these sisters and with these lay leaders and these deacons and priests, yeah. that you are helping them from the center to, mm -hmm. to do their work. Now let's focus on our visit here today. W who's with you on your team? Yeah. And I'm sure there's reasons why each one of the members of the team is here for a different expertise. Yes. So who's with you, David? So with me, uh, we have Emily Shoemaker. Uh, she's uh, my new colleague from uh, USCCB and she's the assistant director uh, for uh, JPHD, Justice, Peace and Human Development. Uh, but we also have Father Thomas Florek, uh, who has been working for many, many, many years with a migrant population. And, and I think he, I mean, he, he knows, he has so much knowledge about migrant ministry, but I would say that one of his main uh, expertise areas is uh, uh, leadership development. Um, so things like formation, uh, specifically working with migrants, uh, is definitely something that's very relevant uh, for us to have him in this pastoral visit. And then we also have a, a sister, Maria Elena Mendez, and she uh, works with the Office of Hispanic Ministry in Jackson, Mississippi. And, he, ah. and she was one of the, uh, the people that helped us uh, organize this pastoral visit in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, so that's what so we have right now. So up to now, we're catching you sort of mid-visit. Yeah. Uh, what has the group been able to do? Mm -hmm. What have they visited? And what are your main impressions of the places that you've been? Mm -hmm. I have it down that yesterday you were uh, able to go to uh, dairy farms, which is kind of interesting only because dairy farms, 
Well, of course, migrants are not only farm workers out with our, uh, the things we eat at the table that are vegetables, but also they work in dairy farms very much. Wow. So I want you to tell us about why Tulare, which one, and then you did visit with farm workers yeah. yesterday afternoon. Tell us yeah. about these pastoral visits. Yeah. What did you learn? What did you do? Yeah. So we, we came to, to the, the farm, uh, and um, it's a great opportunity. Um, every single time we have these visits, well, it's a combination of things. Uh, we visited the migrants, the migrant camps, to basically get to know the people, uh, see what, the, what, they, what their life is about, their, what, what their struggles are, what their, what their goals are, what they desire, is, what, what their, you know, everything about their lives. And, because in order for, for us, for the church, to, to know how to accompany them, we really need to know, to get to know them. Um, and the other uh, benefit of doing that is that oftentimes when we uh, complete these pastoral visits, many times the, the local people tell us, you know, this was the first time that I actually got to go all the way to this farm and got to know these people. This is the first time that I realized that there were these uh, migrant workers, you know, here. Uh, because many times they're kind of invisible. They, they just work there the whole day uh, and are not really integrated to, to the whole community. So it's a, it's a great time to get to know them. Um, and um, one of the things that always calls my attention is, is, their, is their faith. Um, obviously, you know, you, you find people of, 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 you know, all kinds of people, but, but uh, they're very well known for, for having a very hardworking uh, lifestyle and, and their faith. Uh, we got to really uh, very deep conversations to many, with many of them uh, and they were very open and to share about their struggles and, and how they simply hope that, that God was there with them and um, also very, very ap appreciative and, and thankful for the work of the church. Uh, and that was really, really nice to see. So who were the, let's say, pastoral ministers the, the people that are on the ground doing the ministry that you are viewing, yeah. who, who were there? Who were some of the, the agents mm. of ministry that were there, the sisters? The, the sisters, yeah. Uh, they definitely knew the sisters. Um, and they were the ones that got us to, to the different farms. Um, so they're doing great work already. Uh, and that's one of the most important things to really acknowledge the wonderful work that they do. It's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, they're basically, you know, just there for them, uh, whatever they can do. What would have been the highlight for you and maybe for the people at the Tulare Dairy Farm? So if we focus on the dairy farm, which town would it have been in maybe? Tulare County? Uh, it was in actually Tulare City, obviously, in the city in of Tulare. It was, okay. So it was in Easton. And we do have the Memi sisters yeah. who are the... Uh, leading the, the ministry there. Um, then the farm workers was like a separate, a separate visit. Mm -hmm. Where was that going to be? Um, I think that the, far, the farm worker uh, visit was uh, in, in uh, I thought it was in Eastern as well. Okay. Um, both. Yeah. What did you, th this was your first time seeing that. Was there anything, let's say, it confirmed all that you've seen when you've been to Boise and Jackson and all of this. Was there anything um, a little different, mm. a little memorable, yeah. something that made this visit like, wow, I won't forget that. That I'm going to put in my, <laughs> in my book as a lesson learned or a person encountered and accompanied. Yeah. What may have been for you personally something enriching, David? Um, I have to say, uh, the moment we visited this, uh, this uh, grape uh, vine, and, uh, we got the opportunity to not just hear about the lives of these farm workers, um, but it was a very moving moment when, when uh, not only the sisters and, the, and Father uh, Flory got to kind of bless them, uh, but then we asked them to bless us. And, oh, and, and that, was, yeah. that was a very moving moment. And, and, and I could see that they were maybe not expecting that yeah. to, to, to actually bless the priests and the nuns that they were serving them. Um, 
And that, very, that moved me a lot because it made me realize or it reminded me of, of the, the hard life that they have. And um, because of that, uh, I, I mean, I would say that many can struggle with, you know, self-esteem and things like that. And, and for a priest, for an authority, yeah. because yeah. that's what they are, authority, uh, yeah. um, to come and say, you know, when I'm here with you, yeah. I see Christ. Oh, and, and, and then just to pray together and, and to let them uh, know that they are also the church, that they are also missionary disciples, that they're also leaders, that they also have a vocation. Uh, it's just uh, many beautiful things that we got to see and um, I could see it in their faces how, yeah. how it was hard to kind of uh, digest, but at the same time, it, it was uh, kind of lifting them up and, and making them know, you know, God is, God is around and, and, and you definitely have a place in the church and, and in society. So. You know, this is beautiful for me to hear, yeah. being that I've um, been in the diocese since 1988, so this is basically my church, is the Diocese of Fresno, is this community, yeah. this rich multicultural community. But to hear you visit it and quickly just pick it up and know, yeah, it's a blessed community. It really is a special group. Now, one thing you've been using a lot of fr uh, Pope Francis vocabulary, you must notice, like uh, this is to help accompany them. You know, they are missionary disciples. So um, how much in your work are you seeing the direction and leadership and the mentoring coming from Pope Francis? That there's like yeah. a, a leadership model. He's definitely making my life easy. <laughs> um, he, his uh, focus from the very beginning has been the ministry to those that are marginalized, to migrants and refugees. Um, and then he's really making sure that, that everybody in the church is uh, reaching out to them, uh, like, uh, you know, accompanying them, and th just being open to that encounter with the other. Uh, so. so we looked at what you've done so far, but there's things to do. So after we finish this, uh, this little interview, you've got a day here in, the, in Fresno. What are you going to be doing with um, your pastoral visit to the pastoral center? You're going to be here, I think, with Bishop. You're going to be here with some of the uh, people from the diocesan offices. Mm -hmm. So what is your hope to, um, to do with, with us? Yeah. What are you going to be doing? Mm -hmm. I'm actually really looking forward to today. Uh, we have uh, a meeting first with the diocesan staff, and it's just an opportunity for not only the, the people that work in the Hispanic ministry office, but for everybody else to get together and talk about migrant ministry. Because migrant ministry is, it's a, it's a kind of ministry that involves everybody. So what we call pastoral de conjunto. It's basically a ministry that works best when everybody is working together. It's working, it's collaborating. And um, working with the migrants, uh, they also need catechesis. They also need evangelization. They also need family ministry. Uh, they also need to develop, uh, you know, those and nourish vocations. So really every single office in a diocese could see, uh, or could find themselves relevant in migrant ministry. So this is an opportunity to open a space for the diocese to, to talk about that and, and see how, how they can move forward with that. Uh, that's what we're doing this morning. And then in the afternoon we have two workshops. Uh, one of the workshops will be uh, offered by uh, Father Thomas Florek. And, and this workshop is focused on uh, best practices for leadership, develop, uh, leadership formation. Um, and then the other uh, workshop is by Dr. Helasia Marquez. And she's actually uh, not, was not able to, to come visit with us, but she will be doing a video conference. Uh, she already wrote uh, two wonderful articles, uh, primarily focusing on the psychology of migration uh, within the context of migrant ministry. So I'm really excited about this workshop, uh, to just simply participate in this workshop because one of the things that is, uh, that are, is very important to consider is the psychology of migration for the church to know how to better accompany uh, the migrants themselves. I know that it's really Father Flores' is, um, I mean, Father Florek's chance to give the leadership conference there. 
But can you give us a, a summary of what you think the main things when, when he is working with a group this afternoon and going to work on that topic of leadership for migrant ministry, what are some of the principles, some of the main fundamental thoughts mm -hmm. that you know guide um, the work you do, but also that you know this is Father Tom's approach to yeah. that. What are some of his key principles? Um, it's a good question, but I would I would say that I, I would expect a, a workshop that is uh, that allows everybody to participate because um, everybody here has uh, very good expertise, and so to be able to facilitate that conversation, um, to make use of the of the gifts that we can already see. Uh, one of the things that he that he likes to do is is to focus on the gifts, is to focus on the great things that the diocese the dioceses are doing already. And then to, to find God in there. And then to find to find how, how can we um, take advantage of those great developments, of those great opportunities and strengths. Um, and then simply focus it on, on migrant ministry. Um, but on leadership formation, one of the things uh, that he does is, uh, again, he, he lets uh, the migrants themselves know that, that they have that they have a, a vocation, that they are missionary disciples. Um, like we said, you know, that just that simple gesture oh, yeah. of having them bless us, having them bless the prison, it, it's just a different way of working with them. It, it, it's not a top bottom approach of uh, having the church serving them. It's really getting together and helping each other out and supporting each other. So, The second presentation by Dr. Marquez that will be coming uh, electronically uh, when I saw the topic, I, I was intrigued because I, I, I wouldn't have thought that's a, that's a topic that I could learn everything about it because I know nothing. The psychology of migration. So she's written some articles that are the basis of the presentation. What mm -hmm. is, in ballpark terms, a psychology of the phenomenon <laughs> of migration? Yeah. What, what, what is that even? Yeah. What is that? And, and, and also within the context of migrant ministry. So it's an opportunity for those involved in migrant ministry to understand how migration impacts the life of a person um, from a psychological standpoint. There you are. And um, so one of, one of the things that are uh, very important within the psychology of migration is what they call the care of ties. So what that means is basically the, the care of the family bonds. Uh, because when you have migrants, you know, yeah, they, they live uh, transnational realities. They, they have this uprootedness of living their own culture, their own countries of origin, and also this uh, constant feeling of arrival, of getting to know the place where they live. And, and it's a struggle, and, and it's a process of, of adapting and, and also getting to know, uh, getting to kind of shape again your own identity. So uh, it, all of those uh, things are very important if the church wants to, wants to better accompany migrants. With the migrant crisis being something that is um, global, it's going to be so wonderful that you are able to be here, David, visiting us to see how it is that our community, our diocese, is uh, working with people who have been here either a long time as migrants or still migrating. Now, in the evening, you have a um, mass in Carruthers with the Memi sisters. And I just want to mention them by name because they are the ones who are doing this major commitment of supporting the migrant community in so many beautiful ways. So the ones that I know are presently serving would be these, Sister Noemi Lara, Sister Marta Elva Arteaga Valdez, Leonila Diaz Enciso, Sister Ana Guzman, uh, Ana Rosa Guzman, and Margarita de Jesus Macias. So they are the ones who you already said earlier, no, they're the ones doing the ministry. Yeah. We're kind of here for some support. Yeah. Um, what do you hope or what do you think will happen tonight at the Mass, and um, followed by a potluck with the migrant families. How will your, your evening end? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a great time. We, we, 
uh, again, one of my favorite parts of the this pastoral visits. Um, first, always starting with a mass, the breaking of the bread, um, an opportunity to to get together and to feel like we are one body. But then breaking bread during dinner, and then uh, that that's when things get uh, more interesting because uh, again we get to get to know the migrants, get to know their stories, but also we get to share our own. Uh, we get to become friends and. and and it all starts as a, as a friendship, and then uh, we get to learn uh, about what what they hope uh, for, um, what they hope for, and also what they expect uh, from the church, and and um, and that that's always the the best place to start when uh, when we want to better able to accompany them is to have a meal with them, and then uh, get to know them and become friends. Las convivencias. Yeah. Wednesday is your final day, sad day, you'll be leaving, but you have another major place to go and a major reflection to do with Father Tom. You're going to go to a packing company. That's another thing we sometimes don't think of is, no, no, migrants work in canning companies. They really pack all these things together. They not only are out in the fields, they're in packing houses. Uh, so what do you hope to accomplish there? Uh, what, what's your kind of like um, hope? And then what will Father Tom do on that one before you have your final Mass with Bishop Armando and off to uh, the Quinto Encuentro? Yeah. So another very important aspect of these pastoral visits is it's kind of an exercise for, for everybody um, to um, know how to better uh, be open to that encounter with the migrant. Um, so this reflection by Father Floric, it's, it's, it's going to help us uh, facilitate that process. Uh, it's not just uh, a normal kind of service that we are going to be doing. It's, it's, it's an encountering of the other. And, 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 to, and he's going to allow us to stay in that prayerful uh, mindset and, and to be open to the Holy Spirit. Um, so he's going to allow us to, to learn uh, how to really encounter the way that Pope Francis wants us to, to be open to that encounter with the migrants. I can't thank you, David, enough for giving me this half hour in your very busy schedule. You carved out this little bit because now you're running off to that 10 till noon uh, gathering with the Pastoral Center. I also can't thank enough Benito Medrano, yes. who is our coordinator not only for Hispanic ministry in our diocese, but for migrant ministry besides. And a third thing, Quinto Encuentro. Got to thank Benito. He has been here not that long in the diocese, but has hit the ground running and set up this wonderful pastoral visit from the USCCB. It fell on to Benito to connect with David and make this schedule all work out. Yeah. So thankful for uh, everything that Benito has done. Uh, can't thank him enough. Uh, he's really been the one coordinating this at the local level. So, want to thank David, and I want to tell you pretty soon in our next podcast, in our next show, we're going to have Emily Schumacher Novak, who comes all the way from Washington with David on this trip. And what we're going to do is be able to visit with her office distinct from the Office of Migrant Ministry. It's going to be about peace, justice, and integral human development, which is really bringing to mind my best friend, Father uh, Cardinal Peter Turkson. And on that note, I wish you all a good day. We'll be back again with another show very soon. Stay tuned and keep looking at social justice. God bless. Mm -hmm.